FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz here at PDAC right now with Jim Gowans, and he runs Trilogy Metals. It's great to see you in the flesh, Jim. And Good morning. Last time I talked with Pat Donnelly, we were talking about the road and what was going on there. And the road we're talking about is a road that will connect your project to the Dalton Highway. And that's what everything is hinging upon, obviously. So the, we did actually just got a, a notice update on uh, Thursday on our way up to, uh, to PDAC that the EIS, final, final EIS, has been submitted at the end of March. Uh, it's a bit of a delay, but still in pretty good shape for the uh, schedule-wise. And then we would anticipate about 30 days after that so the end of April or the first week of May, we will get a record of decision from, and it'll be a joint one between uh, the core and the electric. It's a, it's a, what we call a binary catalyst. Uh, obviously, the, these deposits were known up in Alaska when I was building Red Dog, uh, but we called them those beautiful stranded assets. The magic of uh, what Trilogy's done is two things, consolidate the camp uh, at the, uh, with the upper Kobach or the Amber Mining District and uh, get the uh, infrastructure agency in Alaska to commit to uh, financing uh, the road into the Amber District to the Belton Highway. So it allows us to get our concentrates out to market in out of, and, and in an ice-free port. When I interviewed you last time, I had a comment on the uh, YouTube. The guy said they've been fighting about this road for 10 or 20 years. Nobody, There was no political will to get this road through, so nothing happened. They've known, I mean, obviously they didn't know the, yes. quite the scale. The road actually district. was uh, was legislated in federal legislation back in the 1970s uh, when they divided up all the, the land in Alaska to the state and uh, federal land and uh, the various wildlife reserves and, and also the native allotments. Uh, but it was in that act uh, it was legislated that they had to keep the, the right of way, free access into the Amber Mining District Hill. Right. So finally Finally, it's going to happen. Hey, we had a little bit of a market uh, disruption, a little freak uh, crash the past week. Your stock, and I should mention, uh, if you're not familiar with Trilogy Metals, the website is TrilogyMetals.com. The stock trades on the uh, New York Stock Exchange under TMQ and also on the TSX under TMQ. So the stock got slammed like every other stock around. I think we uh, we were on the ride down with the rest of the market. Yeah. Uh, uh, and which doesn't make a lot of sense, except for it's a general sentiment. Everybody just panic uh, selling out, off. Uh, we, we're not into production until uh, out five years, so there's going to be a lot of things happening in the world between now and, and five years' time, including uh, a shortage of uh, copper. So uh, I think we're in pretty good shape. It's a, it'll be a temporary thing. I think you'll see it come back uh, with no problems. Yeah, that's kind of my inclination too. It just reminds in the '60s that. It was a sign in some office that said, don't just stand there, panic. Yes. And that's what the entire market in one day is leading all up week. to it. All, all week. week. But, uh, but last, Friday. The last day, Friday, was Black Friday. Yeah. yeah, it was a real Black Friday. And probably uh, the Fed's meeting, uh, Fed, Fed met yesterday on Saturday. They're probably meeting again today. Who knows what they'll do, but obviously. So the road's underway. The comment period got extended, Pat was telling me, because it would fell right in the middle of hunting season. It was right in the hunting season for all our uh, native communities up in uh, the area that we were in, so they extended it so the people could attend the, the meetings, uh, which was a legitimate thing to do. The road is going to be private for because uh, we're gonna, uh, there's a lot of pressure to keep it private because of the fact that those native uh, communities rely on subsistence hunting uh, for their livelihood and having public access to, to all of the fish and game in that area would uh, would definitely have a negative impact on them. So. 
And, and it's going to be a, effectively a, a private toll road. It'll be a toll road. It'll be very similar to Red Dog. What we did with Red Dog was uh, worked out an agreement with uh, ADA, the infrastructure agency for the Alaska state. We had a financial agreement to, that uh, we paid a toll for every uh, ton or every truck of concentrate that went down the road. We paid a amount. And in fact, Red Dog still, uh, from the, the original agreement with ADA, still uh, contributes about 20, 25 million a year into the uh, Ada's uh, uh, coffer, so it's been, a, and that's 30 years of doing that, so it's been a pretty lucrative investment to building up infrastructure for Alaska for Ada. Basically, they don't have to do anything, they just have to float the bonds and then sit back and uh, they get the money in, and now the bonds are, are redeemed, and it's not like a pri- like a toll route, like a turnpike, where the bonds get paid off, and then theoretically the toll booth goes bye-bye. Here, the toll booth basically is probably going to be forever. <laughs> yeah, it'll be a, for a long time. They, they, get, they can get uh, bonds at fairly cheap rates because of the, their credit ratings and thus and, mm-hmm. so, uh, and the fact that they would have a, a tolling rate for with us. So. Yeah. Hey, and one thing we didn't really cover, but the magnitude of, of the district, of the Ambler district and what's there, and you, you keep expanding it, it's, it's kind of breathtaking. It is. I think uh, what uh, what's one of the reasons why I went on the board because I knew about this district, you know, we, we have a good partnership with uh, the Nana uh, Native Organization. Trilogy Metals has tied up the whole BMS belt in the Amber Mining District. And then, of course, across the valley is you got the, the big Bornite Copper and Cobalt deposit, which is a carbonate replacement uh, deposit. And those are all basically 90% or better of the, that whole BMS belt is tied up by Trilogy. And so you've got Arctic, you've got Sunshine, you've got a lot of historic uh, prospects up there. And we did a, a high tech flyover on uh, EM this past last summer, uh, identified a bunch more targets, uh, and so when, as we drill, infill drilling on the Arctic deposit to get up to proven reserves for the payback period, we're also taking an opportunity to go after some of those high priority targets. Yeah, this is tier one, and I like to say when I talk about Trilogy, when I shared it with people, I said these mines will produ- be producing for many, many years after you and I are long gone from the planet. They will, they will. We've, you know, we've got, uh, between the Bornite and Arctic, we've got a few decades and uh, when you start to add in sunshine and some of the other deposits once they get developed and plus anything else that's found up there it'll be a, a multi-generational so talking about uh, the joint venture with South 32 I was waiting for it I know they had till the end of January and then all of a sudden I think it was like the end of December they exercised, they exercised everybody by they, surprise they exercised uh, six weeks early uh, the only person that wasn't surprised was my Myself, I've, <laughs> I've had involvement with South 32. They're very long-sighted. Uh, they're very direct, deliberate in their in their uh, decision making. The reason why the, both South 32 and we wanted the decision early was uh, that it allowed us time to do the the legal work to set up the joint venture and the and the planning, so we didn't impact on the uh, the uh, spring and summer program this year. So that, that was a very deliberate reason. And uh, yeah, like I said, I was I was. Surprised. No, I, everybody who looked at it knew, but until they say yes, nobody's ever really sure. But but they had already sunk thirty million dollars into the project. Yeah, plus they bought eleven point seven percent of our shares. So. Right. So it was pretty much a foregone conclusion. Now you're sitting on a ton of cash. You could just do whatever you have to, and you don't have to be worrying about the market price of the stock. Are we going to dilute? Yeah. Are we going to issue bonds? Are we going to borrow money? You're you're pretty much. You yeah. can just make the right decisions. Truly, truly. Is it? In good shape, you know. We've got uh, about twenty million dollars in our own uh, kitty to, um, and uh, that's basically just uh, for overheads. Uh, in uh, for trilogy, the actual joint venture's got one hundred forty-five million. Then that sh- allows us to get the feasibility update, allows us to do the infill drilling, allows us to do the permitting, and uh, actually get well into the detailed engineering for the development of our first deposit uh, Arctic before we ever have to go out to the marketplace. By that time, it'll be such a foregone conclusion, getting the, the additional funds to finish off the completion will be pretty straightforward. Like, I kind of look at Trilogy's uh, project there, the Ambler District, and I kind of say, that's like the Anwar of copper, right? 
I mean, it's just sitting there, and it's, it's been just, sitting it's there. It's been sitting there for basically about 50 years, and now we're we're developing. When when the Arctic deposit comes into play, it's it comes in. Or it's an open pit that produces over two percent uh, copper as an end grade. So that's a it's a pretty lucrative deposit. Really, the decline in copper prices over the past couple of weeks really have no effect because you're profitable. You're your all-in uh, sustaining costs are so low. Our sustaining costs are low. We're, we probably could make money at uh, 225 copper, but I know that in about five years' time, when we come to production, uh, when you look at the, the global demand for copper versus what copper projects are coming up down the uh, bike, I think there's going to be a global shortage, particularly as we start to move into the renewable resources, electric vehicles and stuff. Uh, the demand for copper is just, is just going to go up. And it's been going up for decades, right? As the world gets more modernized, as the third world becomes the second world and hopefully the first world, their appetite for copper really becomes insatiable. 50% of the world's copper is consumed right now in China. So it's kind of a foregone conclusion. So you did the Red Dog Mine, another remote stranded asset, and this isn't your first rodeo, so to speak. When you look at uh, this project as opposed to the Red Dog. Is it easier, harder? Um, this one's easier. Red Dog. Red Dog was started up in a time when we had lower prices. We had to have port facilities there, but that had storage for a uh, better part of a year because the uh, we were above the Bering Strait, so the the Chuchi Sea was, is frozen for uh, you know up to eight, eight months of the year, um, and so you had to do everything very very fast. It was very complex, and the metallurgy was very fine. Our metallurgy is very easy. Uh, we produce very high grade concentrates and we're able to now with the road to be able to truck it out to Dalton Highway put it on the Alaska Railroad in Anchorage which is highly underutilized it's only operating at about 30% total utilization and take it down to Anchorage which is an ice free port and Red Dog we had to park it for uh, for, to store it yeah for most of the year right yeah so this I I built uh, six mines uh, all over the place particularly in the Arctic and uh, this is, I would argue, this is probably the easiest one, one of the easiest ones I've ever done. Yeah, and you got the uh, political political environment, both in Alaska and in Washington. You got the wind at your back, so we to speak. Yeah, the, the, there's, in Alaska in particular, uh, we have a governor, but we have a the public, too, uh, with uh, declining revenues from the oil and gas industry in the North Slope, which was very robust when we were building Red Dog, but now it's, uh, it's declined significantly, so they need... Need uh, other economic sources of revenue for the for the state, and uh, this one provides it. And, and from the governor has uh, got a particular affection for this particular area of the larger mines that we're building. This is probably the the, the easiest one. And uh, his wife is a Nana shareholder, and his his daughters work at Red Dog in, right. in the summer, so it's a it's good. Yeah, and so I think it's important to emphasize so the joint venture with South 32 only covers part of, of all the projects. Is that correct? It's just, uh, yeah, all the projects that, that we have shared in, uh, in the Ambler District. Yeah. So it's just the Ambler District and you've got other districts that you're working on there. Well, we'll, well once we get stabilized, this is the focus, uh, but yeah. we'll take a look at what else we want to do. Sure, this is the priority, obviously, no question. Like you said, everybody has an interest in seeing this through. So it's happened to a lot of petroleum producing countries like like Ecuador. They were very into their oil revenues. Now they're declining. So now they're focusing on mining. It's kind of just the logical thing. And then the indigenous folks there are looking forward to it mostly because it'll be increased employment opportunities. Yeah, the the, uh, the Nana natives uh, that are partners with us, uh, they're very savvy. They're business savvy. They've been involved in uh, getting revenues from Red Dog over the last 30 years. They see this as uh, the, as the next step in their economic uh, development uh, for their region, for their uh, you know for their people. So this, they're very very uh, proactive and uh, very positive to this project. Right. 
once the uh, road's approved, and hopefully that approval is imminent, uh, how long is it going to take to build the road? The road, uh, we looked at that. We were uh, talking to engineers a couple weeks ago up in, in Alaska. Uh, they, if they start the detailed engineering, that'll take until the end of the year. Get let the contracts up, we would start at both ends, and it would take approximately about four years. Now, we actually don't need the, the road completion before uh, we can u- utilize the uh, the route to bring in equipment. So all we just need is uh, kind of like the ice road or the starter road. Right, so the starter road, so that will get you started on uh, doing all the mine construction there. That's right. We'll right. be able to bring the equipment in over the over the winter time. take it, uh, you just go over the, the creeks and stuff with it all frozen anyway. Right. Ice road truckers, if you ever saw that ice show. Road truckers. <laughs> I'm very familiar with the ice road. Uh, I've been involved in man- uh, overseeing the, the building on that for several years when I was running the diamond mines in Northwest Territory. Oh, really? It's kind of in your blood. So basically, the scale of, of the Ambler District and the other districts that you've got here is really Tier 1. Hopefully, it's going to come into production at exactly the right time. It's very much a Tier 1 uh, with the grades and the uh, the opportunity to develop long-life assets. And uh, I think coming in in the, in the, the five, six years uh, time frame when... Uh, when there's going to be a, sh- a shortage of copper as the world moves towards the de- high development, uh, this will uh, both will hold well. It will fit in very, very nicely into the world. All right. Well, hey, exciting times ahead for Trilogy, notwithstanding last week's uh, market uh, disruption. Again, go over to TrilogyMetals.com. Make sure you subscribe so you get the latest updates. You'll find out right away when the road finally gets gets its final approval. The ticker symbol, it's TMQ. You find it on the New York Stock Exchange and on the TSX. Jim, been a pleasure. Good luck. We're following this closely. It looks like it's full steam ahead. It is very much. Thanks very much. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.